Today, we delve into the past to explore the turbulent relationship between modern humans and Neanderthals. By examining archaeological evidence, we uncover the compelling story of a clash that unfolded thousands of years ago. Throughout human history, intergroup conflict has occurred and has unfortunately been prevalent. The extinction of Neanderthals and the subsequent dominance of modern humans have long been subjects of scientific inquiry. This video aims to explore the hypothesis that modern humans achieved victory over Neanderthals through ancient battles, leading to the extinction of the Neanderthal species. By analyzing available archaeological and genetic evidence, as well as considering factors such as technological advancements, social organization, and adaptive abilities, this study evaluates the plausibility of the hypothesis. To evaluate the hypothesis, a comprehensive review of available archaeological, anthropological, and genetic data was conducted for this study researchers titled, Evaluating the Hypothesis of Modern Human Victory Over Neanderthals in an Ancient Battle. Analysis focused on specific areas, including technological advancements, cultural developments, anatomical distinctions, and the inferred social organization of both species. Additionally, an examination of the genetic overlap between Neanderthals and modern humans was undertaken, considering interbreeding and its potential impact on the outcome of the battle. The evidence of warfare between modern humans and Neanderthals is rooted in numerous archaeological finds. Excavations have uncovered an array of weapons, including spears, arrows, and even early forms of knives, demonstrating the ability to engage in battle. Indeed, the presence of projectile points lodged in Neanderthal remains points to violent encounters. Skulls and skeletal remains bear witness to the brutality of these conflicts. Many Neanderthal skulls show unmistakable signs of blunt force trauma and sharp injuries, indicative of violent blows and fatal wounds inflicted by other humans. But despite being massively pumped up on male hormones, Neanderthals could not withstand the onslaught of the modern human diaspora. Shanadar III is an archaeological specimen discovered in the Shanadar Cave, located in the Zagros Mountains of Iraq. The remains of Shanadar III, a Neanderthal individual, provide valuable insights into the lives and behaviors of our ancient human relatives. One of the most intriguing aspects of this specimen is the evidence of a severe wound found on the body which has sparked debates and discussions among researchers. The wound on Shanadar III's body is located on the left ninth rib. The rib shows evidence of a sharp force trauma, likely caused by a projectile weapon, such as a spear or arrow. The nature of the wound suggests that it was inflicted by another individual, leading to speculation that it may have been the result of interpersonal violence. Determining the exact type of weapon used is challenging. As the wound does not provide enough specific information to conclusively identify the weapon. However, based on the shape and characteristics of the wound, researchers have proposed various possibilities. Some suggest that the wound could have been caused by a long range projectile weapon like a throwing spear or arrow, while others argue for a shorter range weapon such as a close quarter stabbing weapon. As for the question of whether a modern human was the assailant, it is important to note that Shanadar III was a Neanderthal and the wound occurred during a time when both Neanderthals and early modern humans coexisted in the region. It is therefore possible that the assailant could have been either a Neanderthal or an early modern human, but most likely a modern human. Resolving the issue of the assailant's identity is challenging due to the limited evidence available. Yet, it is worth mentioning that there is evidence of both intergroup violence and cooperation among Neanderthals, as well as between Neanderthals and early modern humans. The wound on Shanadar III's body could be an indication of violence between individuals or groups, or it could have been the result of an accident or a hunting-related injury. Ultimately, the wound on Shanadar III's body provides a glimpse into the complex social dynamics and behaviors of our ancient human relatives. It highlights the potential for violence and conflict within Neanderthal communities, as well as the possibility of interactions, both cooperative and antagonistic, between Neanderthals and early modern humans. Continued research and analysis of Shanadar III and other archaeological specimens will help refine our understanding of the past, and shed light on the lives of our ancestors. The Middle East is a region of significant importance in understanding human evolution, and the interactions between different hominin species. The evidence supports the idea that Neanderthals and modern humans did overlap in the Middle East, indicating potential interactions and even interbreeding between the two groups. Here are some key pieces of evidence to back up the hypothesis. 
Most scientists agree that modern humans developed in Africa, more than 200,000 years ago, and that a great human diaspora across much of the rest of the world occurred between perhaps 60,000 and 70,000 years ago. Genetic, archaeological and climatic evidence all suggest these ancient humans were most likely living in and around the Red Sea. In new research, scientists identified a previously unsuspected extended period of genetic adaptation lasting around 30,000 years, potentially in the Arabian Peninsula area, prior to a major Neanderthal genetic introgression and subsequent rapid dispersal across Eurasia as far as Australia. They found specific genetic patterns that pointed to a series of natural selection events dating back 80,000 years. These patterns suggest the ancestors of modern humans living outside of Africa experienced an extended period of genetic isolation and adaptation, possibly around the Gulf of Oman, prior to their worldwide dispersal 50,000 years ago. Overall, the evidence from fossils, genetics, tool technology, symbolic behavior, and dental remains supports the idea of an overlap and potential interbreeding and conflict between Neanderthals and modern humans in the Middle East. This Middle Eastern context has been crucial in understanding the complex nature of human evolution, and the interactions between different hominin species. Moreover, the evidence of modern humans in France 54,000 years ago is an exciting topic that sheds light on the early presence of our species, Homo sapiens, in the region. During this time period, a key archaeological site located in southwestern France, provides important evidence of human activity. At the cave, researchers have discovered numerous stone artifacts, including arrowheads, that have been attributed to modern humans. These arrowheads, also known as projectile points, were likely used as hunting tools and weapons. They were typically made from flint or other types of hard stone and were designed to be attached to the tip of a wooden shaft or arrow. In fact, the dating of the arrowheads to approximately 57,000 years ago indicates that modern humans were present in France. This discovery is significant because it pushes back the timeline of modern human presence in Western Europe. Additionally, the presence of these advanced stone tools, such as the arrowheads, suggests that the individuals who made and used them possessed sophisticated hunting strategies. The ability to create effective projectiles demonstrates the cognitive and technological skills of early modern humans in France. This may have even included the use of fire to burn forests and modify the natural environment to improve hunting and gathering. The findings align with other archaeological evidence from various sites across Europe, which collectively indicate that modern humans began to colonize the continent during the Middle Paleolithic period, around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. This period marks a significant expansion of our species beyond its origins, and more evidence of humans invading Neanderthal territory. We know that Neanderthals were not pacifists, and that they had successfully repelled several attempts by early modern humans to invade their European fortress, so it would defy logic to imply that they would have just laid down their spears, and gone off to a cave to die when their hunting grounds were invaded by a foreign tribe. Indeed, it's time to reconsider your opinion on Neanderthals if you believe they were foolish and unsophisticated. Scientific evidence refutes the widely held belief that Neanderthals were stupid, and that their low intelligence caused the much smarter ancestors of modern people to drive them to extinction. It's also important to note that the dating and interpretation of archaeological finds is an ongoing process, and new discoveries can sometimes lead to revisions or refinements of previous understandings. Nevertheless, the arrowheads provide compelling evidence of modern human presence in France around 57,000 years ago, contributing to our understanding of early human migration and technological advancements in Europe. Furthermore, the concept of the systematic destruction of an entire group of people is not unique to modern history. Evidence suggests that modern humans engaged in activities that could be described as involving the deliberate killing of a large number of people from a particular group with the aim of destroying that group. Their dwindling population, combined with evidence of violence, suggests a possible intent to eradicate the Neanderthals from the regions they inhabited. It is important to note that while conflicts between modern humans and Neanderthals were undoubtedly brutal, they were not the only instances of violence and conquest in human history. When combined with competition from Homo sapiens for the same ecological niche, these factors may have weakened the Neanderthals to the point of causing their extinction, the research concludes. Thus, based on the analysis of available evidence, it is plausible that modern humans defeated Neanderthals in ancient battles.
the combination of technological advancements, cultural developments, anatomical distinctions, and social organization likely provided modern humans with a competitive edge. However, the definition of a species, which is becoming more and more elusive, is at the center of this entire debate. Nature, in contrast to people, does not easily fit into neat groupings. There are no obvious differences between human species, everything is gray. There will almost probably be further discussion about where we came from. Human evolution cannot be empirically tested, in contrast to many other fields of research. Because of the complexities of our evolutionary history, many experts have recently abandoned the notion that humanity evolved from a single location, and spread out into a worldwide family tree. Instead, they propose that our species originated from multiple locations, similar to a network or braided stream with various inputs, divergences, and reconnecting rivulets that lead to the tremendous mix flowing through our veins. This is called the shuttle dispersal hypothesis of human evolution. In fact, an examination of Neanderthal blood types revealed that the ancient blood that once pumped through these long extinct archaic people shared more genetic traits with modern humans than previously thought. Nonetheless, it is important to note that the extinction of Neanderthals likely resulted from a complex interplay of factors, and a definitive conclusion cannot be reached solely based on available evidence. Future research should continue to investigate this hypothesis, taking into account new archaeological and genetic discoveries, in order to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the dynamics between these two ancient human species. Stay tuned for our next exciting episode as we continue to explore the mysteries of our past. Until then, remember to embrace the uniqueness of our shared human heritage. Thank you for watching.